Hey, my name is Samar. I also go by Sam or First Time Panner. Any of those you want to call me, you can. I have a different background. Um, if you saw my last video, my only gifted blue project pen update, um, I had a blank wall behind me and I've been trying to rearrange my background to fit this painting that my stepmom made and sent to me. Um, it is so beautiful and I knew I wanted this to be like the main focus of like all my art because I love having like especially paintings so this was perfect but I love have like having different things and like art on my wall so um yeah I've been trying to figure out what or like how to position this and like how to properly keep it up because nothing seems to be working this won't be my final setup because I still have to some things out but I wanted this up for this video because I love it so much so thank you to my stepmom thanks Susie um I will get into this video which if you can see by this title will not be a project pen update this will be um kind of centered around my low buy um beauty bank which is palettes that are on my wish list specifically eyeshadow palettes um that i really do want to buy sometime in the future but cannot right now because of my low buy um speaking of one of the palettes that was on this list i did buy because it was being discontinued um so make sure to check out my end of month um makeup roundup for february if you want to um see all of the shameful makeup purchases that I have made um, in this past month but for now we're talking about stuff that I am not buying um, until I have the opportunity to buy. I just counted how many palettes are on this list because I've literally been adding to this list up until last night um, for like the past three weeks and there are 20 palettes on this list and also one single shadow that I wanted to put in as an honorable mention um and i also have all of the comparisons that i already have in my collection that i'm kind of using as a way to keep myself from buying these palettes until i do have the opportunity to do so i'm just gonna get into it and the first um eyeshadow palette that is on this list is actually the one that i just added last night when i was watching um hayley o um who was formerly and is back again in beauty news um check out Haley and Kat but I was watching one of Haley O's um eyeshadow palette project videos last night and I saw I'm looking at like my <laughs> laptop here because I have all of them pulled up on the internet and I'll also post pictures of them um right next to me over here but I was looking I was watching her video and she was talking about her colored rain palettes and I've never purchased from colored rain the only thing I knew from them was like the queen of hearts palette which I'm not interested in but she showed the safari palette Rosie is like lurking on my bed and doing something if you can hear something rustling in the background that is her but I think this eyeshadow palette is so beautiful with like just the combination of mattes and shimmers and metallics and the like even though there's except for like the greens but they're very different greens but even though like there's pretty much only one of each color it's like a not a bright rainbow palette but like a grungy muted type rainbow palette and those usually don't work for me because I need something a little more I'm like more analytical so I need something very like laid out for me and I need coordinating colors I still think this is like such a beautiful palette the colors the individual colors are so pretty Mwah. um and as soon as I saw it I knew I had to have it until I can buy it the eyeshadow palette that I think is most similar to this is my Natasha Denona Metropolis palette and um, if you're seeing, hopefully I still have the picture of the palette here, but um, basically every single shade that's in that palette is also in the Metropolis palette. So do I need the Safari Rain palette? Definitely not. Um, will I buy it eventually? Yes. Um, and. It's kind of just like 
because I want to um, and the fact that it's way more compact this palette even though it does have all the shades that the Safari Rain palette has that's because this palette has so many duplicates in it this palette could have been cut down by probably like an entire row column row um, and it would still have the same effect so I do like the fact that it's way more compact than this palette but for now I'm just gonna have to be happy with this next is a palette that I have gone back and forth back and forth on so many times in the short amount of time this palette has been out and that is the Huda Beauty um, Pretty Grunge palette which is her newest um, not her newest palette but her newest holiday palette um, which is just like the cool tone you you know what I'm talking about everyone has seen it I love this palette um, for the simple fact that not only have I really really loved the formula of the Naughty Nude Huda Beauty palette which as far as I know she has pretty much the same eyeshadow formula across all of her holiday palettes so if it has the same formula which I'm sure it does I know I would love it but I have been way more into cool tones this past year than I ever have been since I've been doing makeup and specifically my favorite cool tones are purple tone cool tones which this palette for the most part um the cool tones are purple leaning so I just feel or like mauve leaning and I feel like this palette would be I always say that like my tippity top favorite like cool tone winter palette is my melt Mary Jane palette which of course it still is because I don't have this one but I'm thinking if I ended up getting this palette it might give Mary Jane a run for its money because that one has way more shades as well it doesn't have a grungy green so I will say that's something that the Mary Jane will always have going for it but other than that I think I would really really love the um, pretty grunge palette the only thing that's stopping me from buying this palette other than my low buy um is my dose of colors pretty cool palette this in fact is the palette that got me into cool tones um specifically the purple leaning cool tones because that's exactly what this is except for this um gray one right here every single um color in this palette is a purple mauve toned cool toned um matte neutral so i'm i'm really just not collecting my thoughts very well but i feel like you probably know what i'm saying it's like pr like purple cool toned mattes um which is for the most part the same thing as the pretty crunch palette so I don't really need the Pretty Grunge. I just feel like because the Pretty Grunge palette also has the shimmers, it's more of like um, a complete palette, whereas this one is just like a companion palette or a one and done palette for me. Um, so there's that going for the Pretty Grunge, but for now, I can always just use this as a companion palette and some like single shadows in my collection to put on top of it and I will be satisfied for now. The next palette is another Huda Beauty palette and that is her newest release which is the Creamy Obsessions eyeshadow palette specifically the one I want is the um she calls it the neutral brown one and this palette is like if I'm understanding this palette correctly it seems like the entire palette is pretty much like cream to powders and cream to powder eyeshadow is my absolute favorite eyeshadow formula if i could only ever use one like type of eyeshadow texture it would be cream to powder they are like they're superior in fact the whole reason why i still have the metropolis palette there's Rosie, <laughs> um, but the whole reason I still have the Metropolis palette, even though it's redundant and I don't use it too often, is because it has a lot of cream to powder shades and I just love them so much. But anyway, um, I am really eager to try this palette and like it's neutral browns, like it can't really get any better than that, can it? Um, for now though, until I can get my hands on that palette, I am going to have to, you know, make do with what I have, which is the ColourPop 
Wild Child palette and this does have two of the shades popped out so sorry that's pretty bright if you can see I did take two of the shades out one was a pressed glitter um, which I didn't care for and one was a glitter with or a matte with glitters in it and that was really not a good eyeshadow either so only seven out of the nine shades in this original palette are still here um and this is as far as color story um the closest thing that i have to the neutral brown creamy palette but obviously none of these are um cream shades so that is definitely a major difference and because also it only has seven shades it has a lot less range the next one is a palette that i've talked about before in videos sorry rosie just looks very suspicious right now <laughs> um but that is the rose metals palette from abh and i previously discussed this so i won't go too much into it but basically ever since this came out i have really really been intrigued by this and wanted to buy it because of the metallics in the palette they're just kind of like everything that i want in a metallic shadow which is um at least from the swatches punchy um very like <laughs> i want to say like metallic no i mean like metal colors like rusty gold gunmetal stuff like that those types of tones and like earthy tones so pretty much everything about the metallics in that palette is like right up my alley especially for a fall themed palette which that is in my mind um in the past the palette that i've used to stop me from buying this eyeshadow palette is the um melt cosmetics gemini palette as i've explained before um this palette does not really resemble the rose metals palette in any way um other than the fact that it also gives me fall vibes like i explained in i think it was like my old new gifted blue video that i was doing or maybe it was like deck of panning i don't remember i pretty much used this palette to like satisfy my cravings for the rose metals palette and um this is like a great alternative for a fall look but eventually this the rose metals palette is like not my top priority if i ended up missing out on it i wouldn't regret not buying it but if i did have the opportunity to buy it you know once i'm no longer on a low buy and like if it ever went on sale i definitely would buy it because like i just whenever i see that palette in like sephora or wherever i am i just cannot help myself from swatching the metallics so i feel like if i still can't get my mind off of it whenever i see it i may as well buy it if i have the opportunity okay this is where it starts getting a little unhinged because the next palette is technically four different palettes and i know i have a problem that is um from sephora collection if you know me you know that i do not sleep on sephora collection eyeshadows they are genuinely very good um they're not like pat mcgrath quality but they never fail me except for one specific shade that i'll talk about later but yeah i love sephora collection eyeshadows especially their seven pan um different like eyeshadow lines that they always do every year they pretty much come out with a new line every year and this year it is their precious ugh, i cannot say that word ever precious gemstone precious gemstones um mid-size eyeshadow palette is what they call it i guess but um and i'll like have all of them on the screen the screen at some point i cannot talk oh my gosh i look at all four of these and the swatches um at least online i haven't seen them in person but they all look so good and i couldn't even pick like one that was like my tippity top favorite so i honestly think if i have the opportunity i would just buy all these i'd snatch them up if these are still all available during the um fall sephora vib sale i will buy all four of them and i will have no regrets that being said um in the meantime i do have uh alternatives that i can use in like in lieu of 
the Sephora palettes and for the titanium quartz um, I was thinking because this is like purple berry tones and then it has like that one pop of like that special shade um, it got me thinking of the Nabla wild berry cutie palette this is what that cutie palette looks like and I've actually only used this once before for one shade and it was this special shade um, and even though this shade doesn't really resemble it's like so bright you can't even see it on the screen um, even though this doesn't exactly resemble the one that's in the what's it called now um, titanium quartz palette um, I feel like the vibes it gives the same vibes it like is a purple berry palette with like a special iridescent I don't know what to call that type of shade um so that's for one of those palettes and for the jade palette I was thinking of my ColourPop fresh greens palette and to be fair I think this is like a very good comparison granted um the Fresh Greens has nine shades and the Jade palette only has seven. So really there's like more going for the Fresh Greens palette. Um, but I did buy this a few months ago and I have yet to use it. But at least like from swatches, this looks pretty similar for the Pirate palette, which is like the neutral brown palette out of the four. Um, I was thinking again, my ColourPop Wild Child palette and because I took two out, this also has seven shades in it, just like the um, Sephora one does. This, the color story is a little bit different and like leans more. The Sephora one is definitely just like, at least from the swatches online, a straight neutral palette. And this one I feel like is either warm or cool, but I mean, they're like both brown palettes, so they're like they could be interchangeable for the most part rosie's here with me um while i'm petting her <laughs> she got scared when i pet her but yeah the last one is the pearl palette and to be honest i couldn't think of anything in my collection that i have that is like this palette um and that's probably because out of all four palettes that was the one that i was least drawn to because it's least my type when i'm looking for palettes but I still like the more I looked at it, the more I kind of liked it and was intrigued by it and kind of like felt gravitated toward it, especially for that um, shimmer in the middle. It looks really pretty. Um, and because I don't have anything like it, it would be pretty unique and it might add something to my collection. The next one is one that like I don't even really want that much, but hear me out. It's the Too Faced. Um, Born This Way, the Natural Nudes eyeshadow palette, and this one was another one that I have gone back and forth on for years since it first came out. Um, I went through phases where I like really wanted to buy it and like nearly hit checkout, and then phases where I was like, I would never ever buy this palette. I don't even like the Too Faced formula. I've only tried one palette from them, so I don't even really know if I don't like it. But anyway um yeah this is like this is another one just like the rose metals where if i missed out on this palette which i don't think i will it doesn't seem like it's going anywhere but if i did miss out on this palette it wouldn't keep me up at night like i wouldn't think about it once it was like you know out of sight out of mind but just as i said i'm very analytical i love just not only aesthetically but like in my frazzled brain I love when I have everything laid out for me and like the color story just makes sense it just like tickles something in my brain I don't know what it is and clearly I am not lacking in neutral eyeshadow palettes but just the fact that it's laid out in that way and is a neutral palette like that combination just like immediately does it for me which is why I have so many palettes like that and I thought that the palette that most resembled it was my Juvia's Place Nubian palette and even though it's not like laid out in the same way and it doesn't have like 
shade for shade matches between mattes and neutral or mattes and shimmers um i still feel like a lot of the shades in the natural news palette are also in the nubian palette um so i do need to like dip back into this palette and see if i really even do like the combinations of the shadows that are similar in the Too Faced palette so if I'm not really feeling it then I just won't even bother. Speaking of Juvia's Place, um, the only other palette other than I have this one and then I have the Berries palette, um, the only other palette that I would ever possibly want from that brand is the Rebel Army eyeshadow quad and that is because you know I like greens. I mentioned green eyeshadow in nearly every single video I film and especially grungy greens that is like my grungy greens um that's my kryptonite and that's what this quad is like especially the fact that it's in a quad because I love as I said I love like stuff that makes sense. I love compact things like the fact that i could take this traveling take it traveling that's what i always say in my mind to get myself to buy stuff that's like such a plus for me so anyway well um while i was going through my collection to see if i had anything that encompassed all four shades i didn't but um i did have something that came pretty close and that is my Sydney Grace Mountain Trail palette. Sorry, that was a lot of glare. Um, and first of all, the packaging is so darn beautiful. This is what it looks like though. And although I don't have like exact shade dupes, and obviously this is not a quad, it has much more than like four greens. Um, I feel like there are shades in here that are very similar. Like this could be very similar to that like dark green. Um, this could be similar, even though it has a different undertone, the lighter green metallic. This could be the darker green metallic. The only one that I wouldn't have is like that grayish green, um, which is not a problem because I don't need it. Um, I am totally fine with this palette, but like I said with most um, of the palettes in here, if I had a chance to buy this, like the opportune moment, um, this would be in my life. The next palette is one that I'm honestly like confused. I don't know if this palette is being discontinued or not because it's still on Ulta but it is not even being sold on the brand's website and that's the Lorac Meraki palette. Um, it's one of their, I think it's like one of, yeah, one of their pros, the pro palettes. What the heck am I saying? Um, but this is a palette that I nearly bought during the most recent Ulta 21 Days of Beauty sale. And that's because this is like the ultimate palette for me where I have like a bunch of these like ultimate palettes where it just has everything I would ever want. So why do I keep buying palettes then? Hmm? answer me that basically what i'm trying to say is even though this palette is more huge than i would ever want a palette to be it has warm tones it has cool tones it has neutral tones and it has not bright pops of color but it has more than browns and i feel like it, you know it has like purple tones some pink tones etc and i just feel like this is a really really pretty palette to have granted Lorac is definitely not my favorite formula but it's not a bad formula. I can definitely still work with it. On top of that, I also feel like pretty much every shade out of like the brown tones and like most of the shimmers is also in my Sigma Ambiance palette, which looks like this because this was one of my Pan That palette palettes last year. Um, so I have gotten a lot of use out of this and I know this palette very well, which is, you know, another plus for this palette and kind of just going back to this. So I feel like this has kind of like quelled my need for the Meraki palette, but I will say this only has brown tones. As I said with the Meraki palette, that has different types of tones like purple, pinks, it has a lot of different stuff in there and this is literally just a straight up brown and gold palette. I'm thinking 
if I find out this palette is being discontinued, this might have to be the next palette that I buy because it's not a need for me. I would be okay if I let this palette slip by, but you know, I just feel like I have that need in me to like use this palette and see what it's all about. I'm just so intrigued by it. I don't know. Next is a palette that every single person watching this video knows about. That's the Pat McGrath Labs Mothership Number no. 1, the OG Subliminal. And this is, you know, the cool tone brown and blue palette. This used to be the one palette that I was like, out of all her motherships, I was like, I'm never buying that one. I would never ever need cool tone browns and I would never wear blues. That was like 2021 me. Rosie's making her way slowly into my lap. One moment. But yeah, this is um, a palette that 2021 me would have never bought. And this is a palette that 2024 me really does want to buy. Um, hi, baby. <laughs> Roxy's underneath my bed scratching at it, so she's getting a little nervous. I love wearing blue eyeshadow. I feel like... <laughs> My friends only ever see me in blue eyeshadow because it just so happens that like every time I'm out with a friend I just happen to be wearing blue. That's not the case. I wear every type of eyeshadow but like my one friend was like um you literally always wear blue eyeshadow every time I see you. So now Roxy's on my bed. This would be I feel like a great investment that being said I would never buy a mothership for full price. I would definitely wait until it was 40% off at least but I feel like in the future this is definitely something that maybe 2025 2026 me will own um for now I have the Sephora Blues Beauty palette which was my other pan that palette palette and this Okay, hear me out. This is not really that much like the subliminal, um, especially because, sorry, I can only use one arm now because Rosie's on my other arm. Yeah, you. Um, this, as you can see, there's a shadow dugout, and that's where the blue shimmer was, and it is no longer in there because it was like so crappy that, as I said earlier, this is the one single Sephora shadow that was really bad quality um so if it still had that blue in there i would say this would be a pretty close match as far as color story to the subliminal minus that like duochrome blue um but considering the blue's not even in there anymore and the formula while the formula of these shades is still really good it's different from pat mcgrath so Really, I don't have anything in my collection like the subliminal and I should buy it. Okay, this is something that I'm going to be honest, I was considering buying today. There's Rosie. <laughs> um, because I have a problem. I love eyeshadow. And I went onto the Sigma website today because they were having 40% off. And my sigma brush drying rack was finally back in stock so i bought it and to get free shipping i nearly bought this palette oh my gosh she's so cute if you could see her right now um i didn't so be very proud of me but i almost bought the sigma new mod palette and you know if you know me you know that other than green purple is my very favorite eyeshadow color to wear and this is like a palette that I initially was very intrigued by and almost bought and then for like a year straight I was like I don't want this palette I've seen enough of it and I don't need it and then recently I've been seeing it pop up again and again and it's just kind of reignited my love for this palette or not my love my interest in this palette I just want it to be mine um, and I'm not going to buy like the small one that has like half of the shades in it. No, that's not worth it. I want the full thing. So I'm going to wait until I have the means monetarily and less palettes um, to get this. But for now, I'm going to have to be satisfied with my Melt She's and Parties palette. And I feel like this is not the exact same as the new mod, but I feel like it's good enough. It like has 
a fairly close resemblance and it basically will do the same thing for me that the Sigma mod would do more or less with most of the tones in here. So for now, um, I'll just be using my She's in Parties and I'll be happy, darn it. Okay, so surprise to me, um, I just clicked on the link to this palette and I guess it's no longer in existence. The ColourPop The Feels palette, I don't even have a picture. Oh she was trying to reach my face i think yeah i guess this is discontinued um and it was basically just a green and brown palette and my comparison to it was the sigma earthy palette which looks like this and i guess you know what i'm going to have to be happy with the sigma earthy because this is all i have now but um as a segue into the next one, um, even if the, the Fuelist palette still had been available, I would have said it's between either the the Feels palette or the Off Melrose palette because um, even though these are not like the same exact tones, the ColourPop Off Melrose palette is also a brown and green eyeshadow palette, but basically what my whole plan in this video was to say it's either between off melrose or the feels because i'm not going to own both but clearly i'm going to end up owning off melrose <laughs> that's my only option now this next one that i'll talk about um is one that i honestly think i might take off the list i'll talk about why but that's the nomad ghost town usa palette rosie will like not let me stop petting her um <laughs> If you've seen this palette and you have like the same taste in eyeshadow as me, you know why I want this palette. Look at it. It's so beautiful. Like it's just a dream. Honestly, it's a dream. And um, every single shade in here is a shade except for that like one bright pink on in the last row. Other than that, every single shade in here is a shade that I would use and love. Um, now on the fence about even if i even want this palette because i have heard from multiple people now that in every nomad palette there's always like one or two shades that are like very hard pressed or they get hard pan or something or the other where like one or two of the shades just like is not the best quality and i was recently watching a video with steph from it's just steph and she was saying that the entire row of blue mattes in this palette is just not very good and it doesn't even include the one shade that i was like iffy about um i feel like that's already a big chunk of the palette that maybe would not be suitable for me or would not be the best quality so that being said my comparison to this palette is not a very good comparison let me just be clear about that in no way shape or form am i saying this is like a dupe to the ghost town palette but that's the sigma ivy palette and i feel like though this is clearly only nine shades this does have a lot of the shades that are in the ghost town palette um pretty much like every single shade in here is for the most part reflected in the ghost town palette even though there are a lot less shades in here the formula in every single shade in here is perfection kind of like every sigma eyeshadow is um i mean steph would disagree but for me personally, I love the Sigma eyeshadow formula, so if I had to choose between the two, I would say I'm keeping this palette and just not getting the Ghost Town palette. So most likely, I actually will not end up getting it. But a Nomad palette that I think sometime in the future I will be getting is the... I forgot to pull it up, so I don't know the name. It's... oh, it's literally just called the Travel Palette. Um, it's their little six pan palette and it's really really cute and it's just like a neutral fun size palette that is meant to be for travel which I think is so cute for the theme um, but basically because I've never actually tried the Sigma formula and I didn't want to have to pay shipping you know just like for one item um, I haven't gotten it yet and until I get that palette I'll have to be satisfied with the Sephora I Love palette um, in the shade Cool Medium. This is what it looks like. It's literally just 
a row of matte browns a row of neutral shimmers and then like a lid setting shade on the side you know classic sephora seven pan um and none of these are pink toned which is what the nomad travel palette leans more toward so it has like browns and pinks this one is just like all browns pretty much but it's like the same deal a palette that truly surprised me actually as i was making this list is the urban decay naked 3 mini eyeshadow palette and that's literally just the six pan that's a smaller version of their naked 3 as the name suggests and before i would have never thought that this was something that i wanted um but ever since i've been getting like just the slightest bit more into wearing pink eyeshadow i'm literally wearing a pink look right now from using my elf rose gold palette in my project last year um i have like started opening my mind up more toward pink neutrals and that's pretty much exactly what this palette is and it's <laughs> and it's small which as i've said countless times uh, that like adds a point to it that just makes me want it even more because it's compact and travel friendly if you show me a neutral compact palette it's gonna end up on this list the palette that i'm comparing that palette to is literally the elf rose gold palette and that's because this palette from elf was meant to be not a dupe but you know a comparable palette to the naked three palette so pretty much everything that is in not everything but for the most part everything that's in the naked three mini is in this palette right here so i would still like to have naked three mini because it is smaller and i would use every shade that's in that palette whereas i don't use every shade that's in this one so i would like to have that one but for now i'm gonna stick with the elf the second to last palette is the terra moon space chemistry palette and this i feel like stefan from snl this palette has everything um not only you know i was a chemistry major and i work in a chemistry lab um so the fact that it's space chemistry like i originally was going to college for astrophysics like space chemistry Mwah, chef's kiss i already love the name and like the packaging but also i recently have gotten into terra moon singles i love the terra moon's formula and their shadows are so beautiful so like a palette that is just full of and i'm pretty sure every shadow in this palette is like a unique shadow like it at the moment is not being sold as a single so a palette full of their new singles and then also some mattes to anchor it that just sounds like a really great palette and very comparable to the adept cosmetics flying fiddles palette i'm interested in that one as well for the exact same reasons as i just said but that hasn't made the list yet because i have to do more research okay rosie just hopped off my lap so things might have shifted so yeah i'm just looking at this palette and i am in awe and the only thing that i could compare it to is itself so i have all of my terra moon singles in the c palette so here's everything that i have and i'm sure i have like I have purple tones in here, I have blue tones in here, I have green tones in here. So really I could do something that gives off the same vibes as this base chemistry palette, but I could never have a comparable palette to it. So what I'm trying to say is I really need this base chemistry palette. The last palette is also from Terra Moons. That is the Lovers on the Sun lunar version of the palette it's not even released yet it is not even on their website yet for like it's been it's been announced but like it's not even on their website to pre-order um but this palette is just so pretty it's so cute i don't even have anything that i could compare this to in the slightest um that's how unique it is and how like fresh and new i haven't even had time to think about it this is definitely 
going to make it into my cart at some point. I'll probably buy those two palettes together. Um, but I'm really excited for that and I'm really excited to be buying more from Terra Moons in general. Um, I still have like a bunch of singles from them that I do want to buy but that's for a later time. But speaking of singles, the last thing I'm going to mention in this video is an eyeshadow single that I really, really want to buy, but I'm not going to yet. Don't worry. That is from Half Magic Beauty, and it's the Wet Pebble single, which is like to die for. I was in Ulta, um, like a few weeks ago buying something else and then I was just browsing around and I've never even looked at Half Magic Beauty but I thought I would just check it out to see what they have and I swatched this I have never I'm not exaggerating I've never swatched anything like this so I'm really hoping that that's how all of them were if I were actually to buy this single because the shadow that I swatched in store completely opaque with one swipe just the most like glossy metallic looking shadow i have ever seen so definitely going to buy that that's not even a question i will be buying that single but it's just more of a question of when um because i'm not gonna buy it yet i'm not gonna buy it now um but until I do get that single, um, what I'm going to use to tide myself over is a single from the palette that I just showed you, the Terra Moon Z palette that I have, and this is the shade Metallic Mocha, and um, my hands are clean because I've been petting my cat, but I'm going to do a little swatcheroo ski, and then I'll put it as a picture on the screen. This also is really beautiful. They're not the exact same shade. But this is pretty spot on, at least for a substitution for now. So I will be owning both, um, but for now, this is fine with me. That is all. I say that as if I haven't been filming for an hour. If you recommend any of these, please let me know which one I should buy for myself for my birthday because I am thinking of letting myself buy a palette for my birthday in May so please let me know which um, out of all of these is your favorite or my cat just knocked something over um, but which you think I should buy for myself especially if you want to see me use it um, or if you want to do like a collab with the same palette anything just let me know which is the first I should buy off of this list um, I'm so excited just thinking about it um, but for now I will tide myself over with the all the palettes in front of me that I do already currently own but um, also let me know what's on your palette wish list. There's a lot of temptation out there, I understand. But thank you so much for watching this incredibly long video. Hopefully I can even get it uploaded. Um, but yeah, I'll see you very soon for my um, end of the month beauty wrap up. Stay tuned, it's gonna be embarrassing for me. Um, but yeah, have an amazing day. Bye.